Lax P3 has a negative analogical relationship. And then finally, number four, alpha has a neutral analogical relationship with delta with respect to R. It's neutral. So we understand, right? And we should be able to map out specifically each of these points um, of reference, right? We can say that beta has P1.1, um, P2.3, P3.4, and so on. We should be able to make assessments of relationships and so on. To be technical, we could say that uh, beta and gamma share um, P3, but do not share the meta property of P3, right? The meta properties. Meta properties being both location and property, right? They share property, but they don't share location, right? So there you go. Okay, I think that's, I think that's clear, hopefully. All right, now is the attempt to solve. Okay, so I'm going to give you some instructions, and then I'm going to very, very strongly encourage you, because I'm not going to incorporate it into my notes. It's only going to be in the video. So the only way you're going to get the answer to this is if you watch the video. You're not going to be able to get the answer from looking at the notes, because I'm never going to put the answer in the notes, right? So, which is an incentive for you to really try and solve the problem yourself. Read the, uh, the rules for the game. Then what's really, really important is that you read the description. Read this description. Based on the description that you have here, which is really technical. I mean, this is, this is, the, end of, this, this is the end of section two. So this is as deep as it can possibly get. Read the description and populate every single quadrant in groups alpha through delta with the information that you're given in the description. Right? So read the description, very important. Read it slowly, read it carefully. I would populate it maybe two or three times to make sure that your answers are the same. Then pause, pause the video. Right? So I pause it now, read it, and then unpause it and look at my solution. If your solution doesn't match my solution, then there's some problems. <laughs> there's problems, right? So let's uh, pause it, try and solve the problem, unpause it, and then watch me work through the problem. Okay, so let's go through this. We're going to use heuristic modeling to determine analogical meta uh, property relations, right? So uh, again, the game that I decide is, uh, that I designed is a heuristic model, an explanatory model. Here's the explanation. Here's the incorporation of the explanation into the model. And obviously, it works both ways, right? I could just be given the model, and then I could describe the model, or I could have the description and then apply it to the model, either way. So this is going to be heuristic modeling. to determine uh, analogical meta properties to determine very, very, very complex stuff here. Okay, rules to the game. Here are the rules. Given the following descriptions, given the following descriptions, Determine the properties of the following four groups. We're going to have four groups like we've been doing all along. Group alpha, group, group beta, group gamma, group delta. Four groups. Simple. The random property generator, R, cannot occupy the first quadrant of any group. Okay. The random property generator is the only property allowed to be replicated with any group. Right. So that means you can have two or more random property generators in any of the quadrants of the group, but you couldn't have like two P1s in a group. You can't have two P2s in any quadrant of the group, right? Any particular property can only occupy one quadrant of the group at any given time, okay? The only properties available are P1, P2, P3, P4, and R. So obviously you know what the random prop, that's an assumption. I didn't put that there, but that's an obvious assumption, I hope. Um, that the random property generator can generate one, two, three, four, five things. It can generate itself, it can generate P1, P2, P3, P4, or itself. Okay. Okay, so those are the rules. No problem. Now the description. Before the description, let's draw. Let's draw. And I want this to be very clear, so I'll make it right. Here's what we have. 
Okay. Oops. Oi. We have this. done is I've given you one, two, three, four. I've given you four, um, I've given you four properties. I've given you four properties as cushion so that the game isn't really difficult where you had a completely blank slate. I don't want to make it that hard. So basically for those of you who are statisticians, 25% of the solution is already there. You only have to solve 75% of the solution in order to get at the answer because each quadrant rec represents 6.25 percent. 16 quadrants, 100 percent. So if this was a test that I was giving, then you know you can assess grades really, really easy, easily. Let's say I'm at, this would be a higher level sort of analysis test that you might give to someone you're training in sort of complex data analysis, right? You get one wrong minus 6.25. You get two wrong, you take that off twice, right? Da -da -da. Acceptable pass rate is like 80 percent, something like that. Okay. So what, what's given in this example? Okay, what's given is P2 here, P1 here, beta has nothing, so obviously that's going to be difficult to solve. Gamma is P1, delta has P1. Uh, make sure I did that right, P1, P, P2, P1, P1, P1. Okay, so that's all, that's all that you're given. Now, I have to populate the remaining quadrants with the proper properties and meta properties, right? Because this is a meta property analysis, right? In our analogical relationship, based on the description that I'm given. Now, this is going to be my own particular method of solving it. Other people might use different methods to solve it. It doesn't really matter. As long as we all arrive at the same conclusion, that's that's the only thing that counts, right? All right. So we begin. Alpha has a positive. Alpha has a positive analogical relationship with beta with respect to P4.4. So they share a meta property in location in quadrant 4 of P4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So there has to be a P4 here. And that means there has to be a P4 here. Right? Alpha now has a positive analogical relationship with respect to beta at P4.4. So we populate it. Okay. Simple. Hopefully, I hope that was simple. Um, and a negative, and I should check the ball. I won't check it off. I just don't want to lose because if I miss any pieces, it's going to screw up my analysis. And a negative analogical relationship with gamma and delta. Gamma and delta. So alpha has a negative analogical relationship with gamma and delta with respect to P4. So there's a negative analogical relationship between gamma and delta with respect to P4. We recognize that our negative analogical relationship means that the property is not shared. Right? Since I just say P4 and not P4.4, we know that I'm talking about properties and not meta properties. So if this already has a property P4 because it's shared P4.4 between alpha and beta, we recognize then that Gamma and delta cannot have P4 in any of the remaining quadrants, so we've eliminated that. So on the side, we can put gamma, and we can put delta, and we immediately know that there's no, I'd put a line through it, right? There's no P4. There can't be P4 in, in there can't be P4 present in gamma or delta because there's a negative analogical relationship between alpha and then gamma and delta. We, we justify that based on the previous claim, right, that P4.4 is shared between alpha and gamma. Okay, so that should be, sh we should see why that's the case, right? So, and a negative analogical relationship with gamma and delta with respect to P4. So they can't have P4, okay? Beta has a negative, beta has a negative analogical relationship with alpha, gamma, and uh, delta. Beta 